Just 10 cents a day helps fund local programs like Scenic Stops, Northwest Ohio Journal, and BGSU Brain Game. Watch. Connect. Explore. My name is Chuck Anderson. We are at my house here in Wood County. Within the first week of living out here, we lost power for a week and uh, bought a generator. And uh, over time, got really frustrated with that generator trying to start it. So started looking at alternative energy. So I started doing some experimentation, bought a small little solar panel on eBay, hooked it up to a car battery, started learning how to charge a car battery. And I knew from there I'd have to use some type of inverter to get it to home power. So I started to think about beyond the, the one or two power outages that we'd have a year. And I started thinking about how can we generate that every day? So that became really a more, much more significant project. The system that I started originally was just on the garage, eight panels, um, small 80 watt panels, uh, feeding um, a grid tied, grid tied meaning it's tied to the grid with battery backup. And then at some point, talking to my wife, thinking we can grow this, we added four more on the porch. We, see, we were seeing that solar panels were continuing to drop in price. It was getting easier and easier to install. Um, and then uh, most recently, we've added uh, eight panels east and west on our home. Um, and those will catch the morning and um, evening uh, sun, which uh, expends, give, gives a much longer, lengthier window of power during the day. We also have a little 10 watt panel on top of our house. It feeds a direct current or the same current that you have in your car from a battery. And that feeds things like little cell phone charges, chargers. Um, we have a little backpack sprayer that we can charge with that. Um, so now we're up to 20 solar panels and each one that we purchase now is bigger. The first one was 80 watts. The last group that we bought, 210 watts a piece. So massive solar panels. Then I went for the big swing, which was the uh, the, the um, windmill. Windmill doesn't generate that much power, but it is, um, it's a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> uh, wind is significantly more challenging for a homeowner to put in. Um, I don't know about the industrial systems, but uh, for a homeowner, um, first of all, you have to have a clear area because if that pole fall, falls, it's got a, it can't fall on anything. It can't fall on someone else's property, it can't fall on a building. So the first thing you need is a clear span. Um, the other thing as it relates to wind, uh, the experts say you got to get it up in the air, so 60, 80 feet. Mine, now mine's 50 feet, um, so I need a 50 foot clear area all the way around from there, and then um, then you got to get permits because it's a high structure. You don't want to get it near an airport and put a, a wind turbine in. Um, and then there's the electrical portion. You got to get it tied into your system so that if you're generating electricity, it's in a safe manner. The grid is really a highly valuable thing for a home. Um, and what happens is the energy goes into the batteries. The batteries say, I'm full. It uh, exports it to our home. Our home says, well, we don't really need it now. What it does is starts to send energy back through backwards. So your, your meter starts spinning the other, the other direction. So you'll see at times when it starts to go back and forth. So it's that constant balancing. And during the day, it's spinning backwards and sending it to the grid so other people can use it. Um, at night, it comes back the other way. And ultimately, your bill that you get from your electric company is based upon the net usage. So it's constantly a balancing act between the grid and what you're generating here. This is really a power station. When I started generating my own electricity, I started realizing, wow, there is a lot of money that's gonna be involved in creating my own energy. Um, so I went out and purchased something called a kilowatt. It's a small little device that any homeowner can buy. You literally plug in your device, plug it into wall, and you can plug in, it tells you the cost per year, it tells you how much energy that device is using, because you might think, I'm not sure I wanna use that device. Neat little devices like this, anyone can do. About half the savings that we have in this home are based on conservation, half are based on creating my own energy. We chose a home design where the stove was in the center of the house. We can burn wood in this home and heat this home without the furnace turning on ever. Zero degrees outside, the front of the house is warm, the back of the house is warm. We're really well set for heating. We replaced the refrigerator and the dishwasher with ENERGY STAR devices. 
Um, we've gotten rid of devices that we realize we don't even need, you know, it's the extra refreeze, the freezer, the hot tub that we weren't using very often. So get rid of those things. Light bulbs, everyone knows about that. Compact fluorescent bulbs are very common, but now they're starting to see uh, LED bulbs that are even lower energy. We generate our uh, own eggs here. We have chickens, we have uh, our beautiful garden, honeybees, things like that. For light, we have this little solo tube. It's a, That's a brand, but it's a tube that has a little um, light dome on the on the roof and that uh, shines it looks just like a light during the middle of the day so some of the other things that are fun to do we have a little collection of little things all around the house that are um, conservation based what's exciting is the learning um, there's lots of other reasons that chime in okay I save money it's it's great saving money but ultimately there's a lot of excitement and learning that in the future I know that this is gonna be the way it is for a lot of people. I mean, society is gonna to have to figure out how to do things differently. Fossil fuels aren't gonna be around forever. And, and ultimately, I like knowing and learning about that early on. So that's ultimately the number one reason is just learning um, for myself. So that's why I do it. Scenic Stops is brought to you by WBGU-TV. Support great local programming by giving now at wbgu.org slash pledge.